Okay, so you want to select two images that you think will kind of look cool with each other. And that can be a lot of different things. You could do um, contrasting colors. Like this one is kind of, um, these like black and red compared to this black and blue setting. So that's why I kind of selected those two to go together. And then these two, um, I kind of liked the texture, the contrast of this texture compared to this simple background and the bird. And there's a lot of different ways you can do a weaving. One way is to cut strips, um, one of your images vertically and one of your images horizontally. I think an easier way, so you don't have like a bunch of different strips that you're messing around with, is to just pick one of these to be your loom piece. And that means like the, the one that you're going to use as your, uh, your base that you'll weave everything else into. And an easy way to make a loom piece as I say, I'll take this one as my background, is to fold it in half. And it just it depends on how precise you want to be. Um, if you want to be really, really precise, you get a ruler and make these perfectly straight lines. You start to cut. If you want it to be a little bit more wild, you can do that. So I'll do one of these kind of wild and one normal. This will be the first normal one. And it also depends on how big you want your pixels or your grid to be. If you want it to be really itty bitty, um, little squares, you're going to cut smaller strips, and if you want it to be really big squares, you'll cut bigger strips. I'm going to go somewhere in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting. But the trick here is I'm going to leave a border, that way this is not falling apart into a bunch of little strips. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. All right, so when I open this up carefully, I should have a photo that has these little strips in it like that, but it's still connected, so I don't have to worry about all these little strips kind of fluttering about. However, this one, I do need to cut into strips, and this is kind of where you have to be mindful. If I cut vertical strips, and I'm trying to weave it in and out of here, it's gonna be like that. Um, which could be okay, but what I want to do is cut horizontal strips so I can weave those horizontal strips through. And again, you can be really precise with this or not, but for this one, you do want to keep it in order. You don't want them to get all out of order. Oops. Again, you can use a ruler here to make your strips nice and even. Or not, just two different looks. start weaving. So I don't know if you've weaved before, but how it works, it's basically a pattern. So you start with under, over, it doesn't matter, but whatever you start with, you want to do the opposite. So I'll just start with over, and then I go under the next strip. And then over the third one, under the fourth. Over the fifth one, under the sixth. Over, under. Over, under, over, under. And then I'm going to slide that strip up as high as I can. And then I'm going to do my next one, but this is where I go opposite. So if last time I went over my loom piece, this time I'm going to start by going under my loom piece. So I'm going to go under, then over, then under. There we go. There's my next one, and I kind of just slide it up to butt up with the next one as far as I can get it. And then I continue with the pattern. So this one went under, this one's going to go over. And I'll go ahead and um, just speed this up here so you don't have to watch me do this the whole way. All right, if you start to get halfway through and you're realizing that like it's really hard to control your strips, what you can do is take a quick pause. 
flip it over and then just like put some tape across your weaving because that will definitely help keep things in place as you're wiggling things around. Okay, so as you can see, I have two extra strips, and that makes sense because there's a little bit of a border on the top and bottom of my loom image, my original image. So these aren't gonna fit in there, and that's fine. Um, but this is my completed image. So what I could do now is finish off by putting some tape along the edges on the back to make sure everything stays in place. I can trim it. If, if I want to, some of you might like the look of this um, kind of pixelated edge, but you can trim it off if you want to. And you can play around with, you know, edging and stuff like that too. All right, so that's one. And then the other one, just real quick, I wanted to show you is you can get a little funky with this too. And like if I start off with um, this guy is my loom You could do curvy, a curvy grid or a diagonal grid. Lines. So there's this one that's kind of like this, got this curvy look to it. And now I'm going to cut my stripes here. All right, so for this one, I this was kind of a happy accident, how this black lined up with his hat. I think that's cool. And then as I got down here, I really wanted to keep his hands and the end of that instrument kind of in view. So I just opted to go under two and then pop up rather than continue my pattern. So you can play around with that too, like what areas are you gonna leave up, what areas are you gonna push down. So you can go to a more straight, grid following all the rules or you can kind of start to tinker around and play around with different shapes and stuff it's kind of fun because this creates the illusion of like arrows there in the middle which is kind of fun to play around with so what if you did a zigzag loom um what if you did like three fat areas and then super skinny and then a couple of fat more you know other ones that are fat over here so play around with this have fun with it um the big thing is try and find two images that contrast each other whether that's color or texture but something or lights and darks they should contrast each other so that when you put them together they create like kind of a fun juxtaposition that means kind of a unusual contrast so have fun good luck <laughs>